Hi, my name is Sarah Jakes Roberts and welcome to Engineer Your Life. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Sarah, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Um, Pastor Sarah, rather, I, I need to respect your office that God has placed you in. Um, it's an office with so much grace, with so much purpose. And it's such a privilege to have you here in South Africa with us. You know, I've watched you for years and I'm sure the community that we've built at Engineer Your Life has watched you for so many years as well. So we really, really appreciate that you took time out of your very busy schedule to come here and be with us. Oh, I'm grateful. I've always wanted to come to South Africa. So in many ways, it feels like a homecoming. Really? Is yeah. this your first time? It is my first time. Yeah. 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 How's your heart doing? Oh, my goodness. Um, today, <laughs> it's a little frantic. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. uh, traveled from Cape Town this sure. morning and we had some travel dilemmas. But I'm really just full of so much excitement and mm -hmm. anticipation about what God's going to do tonight. A lot of South Africans, there's a young girl out there. Um, in South Africa, there's Soweto, which is a township. Um, the rest of Africa, you have Lagos. You have all these townships, these spaces where Africans exist. And there's young women who look at Sarah and they're like, why do people like Sarah have so much grace over their lives? How did they find their purpose? Firstly, what is purpose, Sarah, Pastor Sarah? And how does one find their own purpose? Mm, I think purpose is really a mentality. Sure. It is an acceptance of God's unique anointing that exists over your life sure. to recognize that your identity was not something that God did randomly, but mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. said, you need to exist in this family, in this generation for this time. The acceptance of that belief changes the way that we show up in the world mm -hmm. because we recognize that we are not representatives of our family or even our country, but rather representatives of God wherever we go. My purpose is to represent God everywhere I go. I feel like I can't find my purpose because perhaps I don't have a relationship with God. Can purpose exist outside of God? Uh, I think that people can find pockets of fulfillment sure. outside of a relationship with God. I think that we see that all of the time. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the type of fulfillment that really allows you to recognize that your life is a light in the world, mm -hmm. that really allows you to go into dark spaces and still have a sense of protection is a direct correlation to our relationship with God. And so I would never diminish the work that someone has been able to do outside of their relationship with God. Sure. But I can only imagine how much more magnified and multiplied mm -hmm. it would be mm -hmm. if they were ever to partner their works with his plan. Is there ever a moment in your journey where you feel like I have arrived and found my purpose because I think the biggest thing that we go through as young people is that we don't know when we found it I mean you've been very open about the grace that has carried you um, things about when you were younger what you went through when you had your first child and you being open about how grace has carried you in that season and how you have now become Pastor Sarah whose God has blessed so much and is using to influence others how do I myself say I think I've found my own purpose. I think it's something we struggle with a lot. 
I have to tell you that most people know me as Pastor Sarah. And while I believe that is an aspect of my purpose, that's not the totality of my purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm a mother, I'm Mm -hmm. a wife, Mm -hmm. I'm a friend, and I find a sense of purpose in all of those things. So before there was Pastor Sarah, before there was someone whose videos were being watched, I found a sense of purpose in being a single mom to my two Mm -hmm. kids. I found purpose in creating stability for them coming off the heels of divorce. And so purpose, like I said, is really the attitude, the spirit in which we show up in our present moment. So right now, my purpose is to sit here and have a conversation with you that hopefully touches people. And then after this, my purpose may be to FaceTime with my daughter. And so it's not a destination. It is a responding to the Mm -hmm, ever present mm -hmm. need of the moment. Hey guys, thank you for all the messages. Thank you for all the DMs. Thank you for all the emails. I mean, we can see that the work we're doing as the Engineer Your Life team is impacting you in a positive way, shaping your mental health, shaping your growth, shaping your wellness. Please don't forget to subscribe so that we can grow the community. We can also be able to get better guests, bigger guests, as we have more impact. Now continue enjoying the episode. Um, I want to speak about faith. Because uh, uh, very close to purpose, there's an element of faith that you must apply in your life consistently, especially a faith that works. Um, I'm a consumer of uh, Pastor Tony Evans. Yeah. And that man describes faith in a manner that just blows my mind and obviously has blown many people's minds and has changed their perspective in faith. He says in in order to operate effectively in um, in God's faithfulness and in God's faith and have faith work for you, you need to be consistently connected. Yeah. Um, are there ever times in your own personal life, Pastor Sarah, where you were like, I'm not, I'm not faithful enough to God. Um, do I, am I still deserving of God's faithfulness back to me? No, that never happens to me. I always, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Who can feel worthy of the faithfulness and goodness sure. of God? Yeah. I think that I wake up every day attempting mm-hmm. to match his faithfulness. Mm-hmm recognizing that there are moments when I fall short, but also realizing that my breath is a promise to try again. There are moments where I feel more connected to my doubt, more connected to my anxiety, more connected to my worry. And so being transformed by the renewing of my mind requires me to remember that I have a hope and that that hope is not in the things of this world. My hope is not in a platform or in books. My hope is in the revelation of who I know Jesus Mm -hmm, to be. mm -hmm. And when I remind myself up that I can live in that hope. It brings my spirit rest. But there are plenty of times where I have to remind myself to try and match God's faithfulness, even though I know there's always going to be a distance between my faithfulness and his. I'm faithful. I've accomplished. I get to travel to South Africa like Pastor Sarah. Um, I'm, I'm doing all these international things where people are defining me according to my status rather than who I truly am. As you're saying, you're a mother. You're a wife. You were still purposeful when you were still a single mother. How do I remain rooted when God is blessing me now in everything that I'm doing? How do I remain connected to Mm. God, remain humble and remain of service to other people? I really try to be transparent with my platform and to be human with my platform. I know that oftentimes when we see people in ministry, we only see one dimension of them. And because we only see one dimension of them, we think that that's all of who they are. So it's not uncommon for me to have a preaching clip, but then a video about my children getting on my nerves or a video talking about me coming out of a space of anxiety, because I want you to understand that the same God that is working and ministering through me is working through my humanity. Mm -hmm. It's working through my own fear, working through my own anxiety, because I need you to understand that there's nothing different from me than there is from you. I've got to work through my nerves. I got to work through my fears. And if you feel that that doesn't give you a pass to not step into your purpose, it is an opportunity to invite God's presence in this. I feel grateful and I feel willing to do or not do whatever God has me doing in whatever season I'm in. And so I try to resist the idea of accomplish and arrive because he's still working on me on a core level, regardless of what people see on the outside. Also, this 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 concept of arriving, I mean, in comparison to what? Yeah, right, you know? right. Like to who? Yeah. Arriving according to what? So it's a consistent journey. Um, The part about just remaining rooted, can you touch on that a bit? How do you remain rooted in the midst of all the noise of everything that surrounds you, um, for the lack of a better word, the clits and the glam that surrounds you? How do you remain rooted and, and trusting with God? I'm constantly asking God to search my heart, to show me myself. 
Um, when you become someone who is admired and maybe inspirational to other people, you see a lot of what you do well. Okay. But I never want to fall for the illusion that I'm always showing up well. My husband, my relationship with my husband and my friends, they're always like pulling my coattail. Like they're like, you know, you could have done better or you know you're not this, you know you're not that. And they're saying it jokingly, but it also reminds me that I still have work to do. For me, we have not arrived until we look like Jesus. Sure, and sure, I sure. know all of the areas <laughs> where I don't look like Jesus. Yeah. And so the the humility of knowing as far as I've come from the girl who had doubt, as far as I've come from the girl who had so much shame, I still see opportunities for growth yeah, where I yeah, can grow yeah. in my spiritual walk and grow in my journey. And I try to be honest about that as well. So people don't think that I have arrived. But when you say, God, search me, show me the areas where you still want to allow your presence to change me and transform me. It humbles you, but then it also makes you hungry. So humble and hungry. Yeah. 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 Do you ever feel like because you show the human side of who you are, that vulnerability makes the vultures come for you more? Um, because they're, they're, they can be very mean unnecessarily when you're just saying, hey, you don't yeah. have to portray this perfect picture just because you're in ministry. There is a human Sarah and God exists in the human Sarah as well. You know, I'm sure that, that, that I'm sure that that's true. Um, but God, I will tell you, God has really insulated me with a lot of love. Yeah. Um, there are so many people who go out of their way to make sure that they know that what I'm doing is valuable to them, that it means something to them. And while I want to believe that I would do it even without those yeah. acknowledgments, it is helpful because it shields me. So I know that there are people who may not necessarily agree with my form of ministry. They may not agree with the way that I show up in the world and that's their prerogative. I don't exist to change their mind, but I am grateful for the lane that God has cultivated for me sure. and the people who are attracted to that lane. There's one of my favorite quotes is that anything of value takes time. Why should I keep on waiting on the Lord to get the life that I believe I deserve? Mm. Well, there's the life you believe you deserve. Sure. And then there's I the life you. that God has for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. you may be settling for a birth. Let me tell you, the life that I wanted, I was in a first marriage. I felt like if this person would be faithful, I could have this white picket fence. I could be a stay at home mom. And I felt like that was my idea of success and yeah. happiness. This particular person being what I needed them to be. But through God's plan, I realized that I had to surrender what I thought my life should look like and trust that God would reveal to me step by step, maybe not a big picture, step by step what my life should look like. And what I am standing in now is God's vision for my life. And it is exceedingly and abundantly. I never dreamed of coming to South Africa. Yeah, I never yeah, dreamed yeah, of yeah. preaching. I never dreamed of people knowing my name. Yeah. This is God's vision for my life. And I'm grateful that he sees stuff in me that I would never see in myself. Pastor Sarah, and last but not least, um, I always ask this uh, to every guest. I've had over 100 episodes, and obviously you are one of our notable guests. And once again, thank you so much for coming to our platform and, and blessing us with your ministry, because this is ministry. Ministry yeah. exists in everything For that we sure. Do. When we greet people, when we hug people, that is all, always ministry. We're just transferring the love of God. I always ask them, what's that one thing in life that you know for sure? Mm, that I'll be okay. Uh, that I can do all things through Christ is not just something that we apply to whatever we want to do. I can do all things through Christ is the declaration we get to make when we recognize that life is unpredictable, mm. that you could be feeling well today and the rug could be pulled up from underneath you sure. tomorrow. But no matter what, I'm going to be OK, because I always have access to the presence of God. And where there is access to God, there's rest, there's peace and there's vision for next. Pastor Sarah Jake Roberts, thank you so much for coming to Engineer yeah, Your Life. Sure. I hope the rest of your stay in South Africa as you travel Africa, you continue to impact more lives. You continue to change our lives without you even knowing it. Mm. Sometimes when you're having bad days, those moments of doubt please know that you are transforming our lives. You are transforming our lives emotionally, spiritually, mentally, in every manner that you're not even aware of. So we are privileged to have you in our presence. And we thank you so much for being such a blessing, a huge blessing in the body of Christ. Thank you. Thank you.
Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.